Well, good day, all. I wrap in with your Metal Market Wrap-Up for the weekend edition on this Friday, July 19th, 2024. All right, I'm back. I had a terrible vacation. I traveled out of four days, and I was supposed to be gone nearly two weeks overall. Um, one a plane ride each way, a tornado hit Chicago. My home got hit. I had to run home and put together crews to put it back together, and we've done that. And uh, now I'm here, my family's gone, they're still on vacation, and uh, I'm with you, and I love it. Not a problem at all, but uh, I really was looking forward to it. I love, I was in Montana, I just love Montana. I was there 48 hours, wow. All right, so when we look at, at the markets, I, I've gotta just go back through something, because as I was flying back on the plane, I'm going, isn't this interesting? A couple of weeks ago, Weeks, not months, a couple of weeks ago, the market takes off in the gold, the silver, all the markets. Trump is going to get the nomination. The Federal Reserve is getting ready to cut rates. This is all going to be super bullish and inflationary on markets like the gold market as regulations come off and blah, blah, blah is going to go on. Since then, gold has fallen about $100 an ounce. I'm talking weeks. The silver market has backed off from 31 to the $29 mark. We know that we peaked out in copper about a month ago. It has come down. It could fall a little bit more, but I think it'll have a hard time getting and staying anything under the uh, $4 mark because at the end of the day, when everybody cuts their interest rates, and that is going to happen, they'll keep that going as time goes on here to spur on their economies, the demand will come back. The problem has been in the copper, China. It consumes half the world copper. copper. The third plenum just ended. It did nothing for copper because they did nothing for the economy. They're going to hold down with President Xi's current policy, and it just is having contraction take place. We are not seeing uh, the real estate market there come alive, and that's a major event for the market as well. And that same thinking because of the plenum is hurting what's going on in the energy market. That meeting ended yesterday. So this is all the fresh news in the market. Bonds and notes, well, they've had a big rally. They've gone up to key resistance at upper Bollinger Bands. And I'll, I'll keep mentioning Bollinger Bands because when a market goes to the top or the bottom, 95% of the time the market trades within these. Now, if they're real narrow bands going sideways, eventually it breaks out up or down. But on ways up, you hit the band, you back off, the band's going up, and it'll, it'll keep hitting things like that. So that's what I see going on. In terms of data, at the end of the week, we get big data. Monday, we have basically nothing. We have the Chicago Federal Reserve, the June National Activity Index, and that comes out at 7.30 in the morning Monday. They're looking up at last month's, it was 0.18. So nothing there, but at the end of the week, we're gonna get the PCE. That's one of the Fed's favorite numbers, and we'll get both the headline and the core numbers. I've already done a bit of a write-up in my morning re in my review for my clients to see. And I did get back this week from my vacation. I've acted as though I'm not here. I'm writing very small amounts and so on. It was a disaster for me. I left on Saturday. The hurricane in Chicago hit Sunday night. It hit right where I live. I don't mean blocks away. I mean right where I live in, down, in downtown Chicago. We never get hurricanes in downtown Chicago. And the trees and the damage outside was just phenomenal. Uh, I had to get back, and I did. I got crews put together, and I've got it like it didn't happen. I mean, the damage is there. Fences are down, things like that. But uh, all things considered, not bad. So I'm here for the summer. What can I say? My wife is still gone. She will be gone another week and a half or so, and uh, I'm here. All right. So let's take a look at the markets, if we could, together and get a feel for what we have. When we take a look at the gold market, on a weekly basis, or actually this is the monthly, let, let me start this right. On a monthly basis of just closing prices, this is an all-time high if a month ended here. You're up 2.54% through the 19th of July. Got two more weeks to go. 
when you look at the daily, you've come up into an area where we expected resistance. I didn't think you were just going to run through that. I'm seeing end of the year calls for $2,600 by a number of analysts because they believe, as I do, that while we're getting a correction right now, those fundamentals that I talked about, the likelihood of, a, uh, at this point at least, of a Trump win, the likelihood of all the problems that brings with it, the tariffs, uh, more spending, the cutting of corporate taxes, I can go on and on. There's plenty of negatives to go around, okay? How's he going to treat the foreign countries? We'll have that. And then without any president, forget him or Biden, if Biden wins, it's more of the same. Um, what happens with the Fed? Well, the Fed is looking at the potential of getting ahead of the curve now. In other words, they're seeing that numbers within the data they like to look at, the labor, service industry, industry, the slowdown that they're seeing, they don't want to get to the point where they're chasing it. They want to get in front of it and cushions it as it all slips down. So they got their hand there and it ends very slow. You do that by taking away the restrictive interest rates. In mortgages, you're watching rates already fall with that. You're starting to see some of that. You wouldn't know it if you look at right now at some of the things in the market in terms of home sales, but you certainly see it when you look at what the, uh, the companies have done and what the indices have done uh, that deal with real estate. So when we look at the gold, this was an interesting week. You've gone from 2488.40 to 2395.70. If you don't think that's a big swing in gold, I happen to. For the week, you're down 0.89%. On the bigger basis, you didn't do real damage on this. You made a higher high, but you still have a pattern of higher lows and higher highs. And you'd have to get under 2298 to break that pattern. So you have to drop another $100 to do that. When we look at moving averages, the 18-day moving averages, which is where I'm expecting to see the first support come in if it can make a run to it, is currently 2336. However, if we go back a week, we can see that the market was 2323, and if go back another one, uh, 2310. So that moved up $13, and this week moved up. So. If it goes up another 13, you're probably going to be near the 2350 level to see initial support. Where was the resistance? It was at the upper Bollinger Band. Again, 95% of the time, the market will hit a Bollinger Band and back away. 5% of the time, it'll be over. Many of the times, when you get a market that's going to break out off of sideways action, sideways action, it'll latch onto the band and we get what I term the gorilla glue trade. It's when a market is super strong, backs away. You get corrections, but you don't generally change trend off of that. And you did that. You drifted sideways, and now you just went up and made a new high. Very typical. Again, I'm going to look for that support at 2350, and the market's already getting away from being overbought. So I am still in the long term bull camp. When I look at the gold silver ratio for the first time, now we're back over this 18 week moving average. So gold, in theory, is stronger than silver, as you now need more ounces of silver in order to get the same ounce of gold. When we look at the silver market, we have a pattern here of higher lows, higher highs, bullish, similar to the gold. The support's right here at 28.73. If you take that out, then you're probably going to drop back here into this low area, not too far away from that, the 28.58 area, to see what that's made out of. But I don't think it's as strong looking a chart as gold, and we know the ratio isn't there. And in copper, when the market failed up here, right in this zone, and this was the April-May period, it is still feeling the pressure for the same reason. China, China, China. Everything in China, real estate and all, has slowed down for the past couple of months, and they have done nothing other than talk what they might do and done nothing to support that sector, which is major. In, in China, your home is, for people, it's one of their major investments, no different than America, not at all. And 
the fact that real estate keeps falling is a bigger problem because real estate is what drives local municipalities. Is that really different than us? I live in Chicago. We get taxed to death. To death. It's a terrible place to live for taxes. Illinois is a terrible state to live for taxes. Just absolutely disgusting. Well, lower highs, lower lows, and all you ever hear is they want to tax more. So where's the government going to get it, though? Because they need new property sales all the time to get it, and that's what's hurting. So copper is under selling pressure until China decides to do something. Could it go back here into the 396, 390s? It could. It could. It could fight a battle at the 18-week average, but there's nothing bullish on the chart. And platinum decided to give you a pullback finally. Same time frame, you had that big rally, you pulled back. Now you're under the 18-day average, challenging the 100. If that were to give really ground here, you could drop another $80 into this $878, $9 level. There's nothing friendly on the metals at this point, but gold looks long-term the strongest of the group. In the dollar index, everything fell apart on the dollar. Remember how bearish we kept hearing the dollar? And I don't think that's really changed dramatically. I think the dollar got down to the first challenge of a Bollinger Band, and often that's where a market peaks out or bottoms out on the first challenge. But this is sideways action. And from sideways action, a bigger event happens. So you have to ask yourself, do you think that the dollar's next big move is through all this up here into the 110 area, driving the euro down maybe closer to parity? Or do you think the dollar's going to peak out up here, come out through these lows eventually, get back towards the 100 level, which kicks the euro against it because 57% of this index is made of the euro, maybe into the 115 or higher level? That, that, those are the questions you got to ask yourself. I'm of the latter. I still think that the euro... I think I think the euro uh, is going to go higher, the dollar lower after we get a bounce off this condition. So you put it together, you try to come up. Sometimes I like to show you the other things. Right here, I've set up a lot of my news, all right? And you can put different news sources in different ways on this charting service. And as you can see through here, I can look and set up pages. So I see everything from the volume, the open interest, all the different contracts. And I can click any contract. It'll bring me every month up that is trading right here on this page. Just give it a click, another window will open. And, and it's very easy. And that's very important as a trader that you always see the stuff that you want around you. So if you'd like to learn more, do you like to learn the trade setups that I talk about? And that's really what the fun is. It's in the mornings. I start recording the futures in the morning and I move on to the spider ETF at nine. So one at six, one at nine, I record, I bring up daily, weekly charts showing you what is going on. Here's the trade setup. Here's the dollar risk associated. Here's the initial profit objectives or the stop order. Got to have both in there. Special reports, all kinds of trade recommendations. But the beauty is looking at the chart, seeing it develop gives you a lot of fun with that. That's how you learn. I cover 40 futures, 40 spider ETFs each and every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and this weekend edition. So six out of seven days, you get a lot there. Go to irapstein.com research. You can move your cursor up here to do the same. I'm irapstein. I'll catch up with everybody come Monday morning. You have a great weekend.